Fred Ricciani for the SportsCourier.com here to present you with an interview our own Michael Roberts did with UFC bantamweight superstar Uriah Faber. It's a hard one to call. You know, I, it's, it's really weird having thought both of them have such different styles. They're both equally, um, equally, equally difficult to, to hit. You know, Dominic's moves a lot. He's hard to hit. And we're all hardly moves at all, and he's hard to hit. So it's just going to come down to matchup. Who can do it on the on the day? I really feel like Brown has more dangerous weapons, but Dominic has probably an edge when it comes to the uh, decision in the later rounds and stuff like that. But you never know, man. It's all about matchups in the sport. Yeah, styles do make fights, as they say. Uh, now. You know, you touched upon your rivalry with Dominic Cruz. He is the current UFC Bantamweight champion. Has not fought since October 1st. Obviously, uh, the injuries have not been kind at all to Cruz. Uh, some people are suggesting that he be stripped of the title, and I'm just curious for what your opinion is on that. I don't think it makes sense to strip him of the title. I mean, he's going to come back. I mean, if Nick Simpson strips him of the title, he's not going to fight anymore, but from my understanding, he's planning to come back as soon as possible. Or, um, and having the title for him is, is something that he earned. You know, he didn't just earn it in the UFC, he earned it before that in the WC, which is basically the same thing as the UFC. So um, I wouldn't say it's tricky with the title by any means. Uh, if you had to pick, would you rather fight Brow or Cruz again? I think the fight that everybody wants to see is Dominic Cruz. And, uh, you know, it would probably be a little bit bigger draw as far as two, stuff goes, so I go with that one. Plus, I didn't want to throw me out of actual fighting here. Brown was a really cool, nice guy. Dominic gets the nerves. <laughs> Fair point. Fair point. Big announcement today with the MMA draft. Uh, you and Phil Davis. What was the inspiration behind setting that up? It's kind of funny. We we actually it was only the second time that Phil and I met. And he was kind of talking about. Uh, you know, some of the stuff that I've done as far as creating a brand in the sport and, and, and he wanted to do something that, that he could be a part of and, and uh, build for the future and stuff like that. And then we started talking about how big MMA was, how best he was going to have a draft pick and all these top wrestlers and all this stuff. And as we were talking, I looked at my phone and, and looked at MMADraft.com and I told him, hey man, MMADraft.com is available. We should make our own draft. And he just looked at me uh, just 50 50, and we shook hands and ran upstairs and uh, bought the domain name and, and have been developing it for about two years now. So uh, it's basically a platform for amateurs to be seen, kind of creating a matrix in the, the how to, with lessons and technique and decision making and everything else that these guys are trying to navigate through the MMA world and become professionals, or at least just they're involved in the sport and, and love it. So uh, it's pretty cool, man. Yeah, it sounds like the really great thing you're doing here. Now, you know, you're somebody, like you said, when you're a pro fighter like you are, you know, you essentially are your own brand. Now, fighters nowadays, you know, compared to like 10 years ago, they actually have like some sort of moderately, you know, set path as far as getting to the top. But uh, like, what's the best advice that you'd give for fellow up and coming fighters? I would say the biggest thing is, First, understand that it's a very long process uh, because there's so much to learn and there's there's uh, only so much time. So it's it's a long process to really make it as a professional. And the second thing would be to surround yourself with the right people and, and just believe that you that you can do anything. You know, um, having that confidence and then and having the intelligence to surround yourself with the people to help you get there is is super important. Yeah, and I mean, you know, you speak about it a lot and like a lot of your vlogs and everything like that, just, you know, how positive of a person you are and how that's helped you accomplish all your goals. Also realize like you're an incredibly goal-oriented person, you know, the countdown shows have shown your lists and everything like that. Uh, where does that fit in into everything as far as kind of influencing people with those? Is that something that you push onto the uh, people you're mentoring? Um, you know, I do, I basically, you know, Verbalizing things and making them, making them known to the outside world, not just internally, is pretty important. You know, when you write something down, it makes it concrete. And I do definitely, you know, talk to my guys about thinking big and, and setting smaller goals to move towards a bigger goal. And 
you know, that's, that's helped me a lot. I'm still getting better and better at, at utilizing, you know, visualization and, and goal setting myself, but it's something that is important. And, you know, like the website, I mean, draft is, is, is a really cool thing in that it's giving guys a platform to be seen and kind of letting them see where they should put their goals. And they can see kids that are ranked high in, their, in the nation and amateurs that are ranked high in the, you know, in the, in the world, the different disciplines, they kind of see what they're doing. They can check out the profiles and, and uh, get helpful hints and, and look for their state for a competition and, and see kind of a pathway and see where they should put the goals. So, yeah, I definitely 